All right, we're out on the range today, so bear with any gunfire you hear in the background. Now, today I'm going to have to do something that I do not like to do, and that is spend a lot of time talking. I'm going to warn you right now, this video is going to be way longer than I wanted it to be, and I'm going to spend the great majority of it just standing here yakking at you. You're going to have to bear with the dramatic um, Shatner-esque pauses, and you're going to have to bear with my speech impediment. So, thanks for your patience. This information is dry, but I think it's information that's pretty good, so I want to get it out there. With that, what the hell am I talking about? Today we're talking about spring compression, and specifically the question, can a firearm or a magazine incur damage if a spring is compressed for a long time? Some people say yes, some people say absolutely no. The people that say no are often adamant, and they will tell you that you can leave a magazine loaded forever, and they'll get defensive and say spring compression damage is a myth. Okay, well the problem with that is, for me to do any kind of empirical study to really show this a phenomena, does it or does it not exist, would require that back in the disco days I loaded up a couple of hundred magazines and then left them loaded till today and shared the results with you. Well, sorry, I wasn't proactive enough to do that back when the BGs were on the charts. And besides that, I don't think my paper route money really would have funded the project. So what can I do here today to shed any light on this subject? And the only thing I can think of is, let me share some anecdotes with you of things that I've experienced over the years, and maybe we can come to some good conclusions from that. So, let me show you something. This is one of my Remington Model 11 shotguns. This one is a 20 gauge, it's about 75 years old, and it works just fine. See what I mean? So we shot this one. Now this is my other Remington Model 11. It's a 12 gauge and it has a full length barrel and it works fine too. However, a long time ago I got a Remington auto loading shotgun from somebody who had not shot it in many years and when I got it, it had sat in the closet with the bolt locked back for over 10 years. Well when I took it to the range, it didn't work right. What happened was, after firing the first shot, it would eject the empty shell, but then as it went to chamber a new one, it didn't have enough spring tension to close the bolt completely. I had to hit the charging handle to get it to close completely. The gun had been very well maintained. It was clean, it was well lubed, but it had incurred damage from being left with the bolt lock back for so long. Well, on the strength of that one anecdote, you might conclude, well, spring tension can damage a gun. Well, let me show you another gun. This is my Remington model Nylon 66. And it works fine too. Now let me explain a little bit about how the Nylon 66 works. You take out your tube and you put your rounds in here. It's got a 14 shot magazine. And then you put your tube back in. Now when you put this tube in, the rounds go into the tube and the tube has a spring in it and pushes them forward into loading position. Now, this rifle is mine, and it was manufactured sometime in the 1980s. But the thing about the Nylon 66 is, contrary to popular belief, it was not introduced in 1966. It was introduced in 1959. Now, my father owns one of these that's identical to this one that he bought in 1960. And that gun has been loaded in the house since 1960. And it is loaded to this day, and to this day it works perfectly. So based on that one anecdote, you might think that you could leave guns loaded for a long time without incurring damage. Yeah, but a thing with his particular rifle is, it's got a 14 shot magazine, and he typically loads 14, puts one in the chamber, and then does not top off. And because he lives rurally, the gun is called upon fairly frequently to dispatch raccoons, gophers, skunks, snakes, what have you. And very typically what he'll do is go out and shoot two or three rounds, put the gun back in the house without reloading. And then eight or ten months later when he has to shoot some other animal, he will then stop and think, well, I probably ought to reload the gun, dump all the rounds out, put 14 in, put one in the chamber and start the process over. So although it's been loaded these many decades, 
it has pretty much never actually been loaded to capacity, or at least never spent any real amount of time that way. So take that for what it's worth. Now by contrast, this is my Beretta Model 92 FS. This is my personal one, and it is the commercially available version of the M9 pistol that I used in the military. Whether you love this model or hate it, the 92FS is a high-quality, well-made, very reliable handgun. And in typical military fashion, they issued us this very reliable, well-made, high-quality handgun, and then issue these cheap knockoff magazines to go with it. That's the military for you. Well, when I was in the Persian Gulf, a memorandum came around describing that these cheap magazines had incurred failures due to having been loaded for an excessive period of time. Yeah, we're not talking since 1960, we're talking they were loaded for a year or two while people were on deployment, and the magazines were incurring failures. Now, easy fix, take the floor plate off, stretch the spring, put the magazine back together, and at least in the short term, you're back in business. But they were incurred damage after being loaded for what I would consider a fairly short period of time. Now, make no mistake, though, these are good magazines. They do work correctly. Let me show you something. Now, these cheap magazines work. They work just fine. I've got magazines like this in my go bag right now, but I don't load them to capacity and I trade them out every 90 days. So in shooting the 9mm we can see that this cheap knockoff magazine works. However, it can incur damage if left fully loaded for a long time, and in the case of this a long time doesn't seem to need to be all that long. And I found that kind of holds true when dealing with these relatively inexpensively made military issue M16 magazines. Now, having spent a career in the military, I have acquired lots of these, and over the years I've encountered a few that no longer worked correctly just because they'd been left loaded for a long time. No, not through excessive use, just having been left loaded for a long time. Now, easy fix, take the floor plate off, stretch the ring, put it back together, and at least in the short term you're back in business. Magazines like this can be, if properly maintained, very reliable. I would, well in fact I have, bet my life on magazines like that but damage can occur. And while we're talking about magazines that have been left loaded for a long time, I'll tell you another anecdote. A long time ago I got an M1 carbine, and I don't have it here to show you, you know, the inventory does change occasionally. But I got this M1 carbine, and with it I got a couple of 15-shot magazines that had been left loaded for over 25 years. Yes, really. And one of them no longer worked correctly. The problem was that by the time the last two rounds up came up to be chambered, the spring tension was so weak that they weren't being pushed up enough that the bolt would pick it up. It would just slide shut over them. Again, easy fix. Take off the floor plate, stretch the spring, blah, blah, blah. But there's no doubt that the magazine had incurred damage. Now, people will say that's due to overuse. It's the excessive loading and unloading and using. These magazines had not been used. They had sat unused, loaded, for over 25 years. And that is what had damaged them. But on the other side of that, a long time ago I bought a Smith & Wesson 22 long rifle auto-loading pistol and when I got it, it came with three 10-shot magazines. Well, I bought it from a lady who was selling her deceased husband's guns. Well, he'd been dead for over five years. And when I got this gun, these three 10-shot magazines were fully loaded. So I know they had been loaded for at least five years, probably longer than that. And took the gun out and shot it, they all worked fine. So it would appear that sometimes, depending on duration and so forth, magazines can be damaged, sometimes they can't. Well, it's about at this point in this little speech I give, which I give occasionally, that somebody who has been arguing that you can leave a magazine loaded forever changes their story and says something like, well, the guy with the M1 shouldn't have left it loaded that long. Well. Two things. One, you're right, he shouldn't have left the magazines loaded for 25 years. And two, now you're changing your story. And the reality is, when we talk about shouldn't have left things loaded, 
life is full of things that you should do that people don't necessarily do. I do strenuous physical exercise almost every day. I ran three miles this morning. And yes, you should do exercise, but you know, a lot of people don't. I brush and floss every day, but you know, there's a lot of people that don't. Life is full of things you should do, and that goes to the things of home defense, personal protection, concealed carry firearms. There's things you should do that a lot of people just don't. Let me share with you some anecdotes that I think will illustrate the realities of home defense firearms for some people. In 1979, my brother sold a single shot 20 gauge shotgun to a lady who bought it for the purpose of a home defense gun. A single shot 20 gauge? Well, she wanted something simple to operate, inexpensive, big enough to get the job done, but light enough she could still handle it. At the time, that seemed like a good idea. Well, he told me that in the last year or so, he actually ran into this lady, and she still has that gun. This firearm she takes to the range and shoots maybe once a year, and other than that, it has sat loaded in her house since 1979. And that is the reality of home defense firearms for a lot of people. Let me tell you another anecdote. One day a guy wanted to show me his concealed carry handgun, and it was a snub nose 38 similar to this one. Well, he takes it out, unloads it, and hands me the revolver, and the first thing I see is that the barrel has a lot of lint in it. And then I see the whole gun is just caked in sawdust. And I see the ammunition in his hand, and it's 38 Special, but he's using the old school 158 grain round nose lead bullet. And these bullets have that white chalky stuff that, that lead gets when it oxidizes. This man has neither fired nor done any PMCS to this gun in years. And it's his daily carry gun. Let me give you one more anecdote. I was at a gun show, and I end up talking to a man who is searching for ammunition for his home defense gun, and he acts like finding it would be hard. Well, what are you looking for? Caliber 38 Smith & Wesson. He shows me his gun, and it's an Ivor Johnson double action revolver. It's the old break front type. And he says that the six rounds he typically keeps in it is the only ammunition he has. And the reason he has this gun is because he inherited it, and the ammo, from his father. This is a 75-year-old man, and the only gun he owns is this Ivor Johnson revolver that he inherited from his father. And in talking to him, I got the impression that, that he hadn't fired it in 30 or 40 years. And these anecdotes, and many, many others I could bore you with, I could bore you all day with anecdotes like this, but this illustrates the realities of home defense, personal protection, concealed carry firearms for a lot of people. Now, right now, you might be thinking that the people I'm talking about are dumb, irresponsible, neglectful, lazy. And you could call people names like that. I'm not going to call people names. I'm just going to say that's the reality of life and firearms for a lot of people. There's a lot of things in this world that you should do that you just don't. You know when you buy a mattress... Read the fine print. They usually come with instructions that say you should flip that mattress every 30 days. I don't do that. You know, you should drain your hot water heater and do PMCS to it every six months. Yeah, I have never done that. You know, you should call your mother once a week. I, I don't think I even know my mom's phone number. Life is full of things we should do that we just don't. And it's very easy for me to stand here and give people advice, but not necessarily so easy for everybody to do it. For example, when I was in the military, one of the many jobs I had was I was a master fitness trainer. I went to the U.S. Army's master fitness trainer school. Well, as a fitness trainer, it's very easy for me to say that you should do cardiorespiratory exercise at least three days a week, and that in each of those workouts, you got to reach your target heart rate and keep your heart rate above that target heart rate for at least 25 minutes. Wow, that was easy for me to say, but not necessarily so easy for everybody to do. As a certified dental assistant, it's very easy for me to say, brush after every meal, floss every day. It, yes, I'm a certified dental assistant. I only work part-time in that vocation these days. But anyway, it's very easy for me to say that, but you know, there's a lot of people that just don't do it. 
as a firearms trainer, it is very easy for me to say, go to the range once a week, trade out your ammo, trade out your magazines, do PMCS, uh, get professional training, and so on and so forth. But that's just not a reality for a lot of people. The world, and the internet especially, are full of people who tout themselves as firearms experts and firearms instructors, and it's very easy for some guy with a shaved head and a foul mouth to go on and on about how you should pay him thousands of dollars to get all this professional training. Well, that's very easy for him to say, especially when he's on the receiving end of those thousands of dollars, but that's just not a reality for a lot of people. Now, don't get me wrong, professional training is good, provided that it's good professional training, but it's just not a reality for a lot of people. And so when I work with people, when I recommend firearms, when I do this kind of thing, I take that kind of thing into account. And that's part of the reason why I harp on this spring compression thing more than I really need to. But when I deal with somebody who asks me for a recommendation on a firearm and I see that they have an exercise bike, but the sole function of that exercise bike is as a clothesline, then I have to take that into consideration. Are they really going to do all those things they need to do? And the advice I would really give you is, if you're the kind of person that you need to take something upstairs, but you don't feel like doing it right now, so you just set it on the stairs, I'll get it up there next time I go, and three weeks later it's still sitting there on the stairs, if you're that guy, if you're the guy who changes the oil in his car every 10,000 miles, if, if that's who you are, then what I would tell you is, Embrace that, know that about yourself, accept that, and use that as part of your decision-making process as to what kind of gun you're going to get. Instead of buying something like this that does require a decent amount of training to really master it, instead of getting the cheap knockoff magazine that does require a lot of maintenance, maybe you should make a decision to get something that doesn't require so much maintenance. And that's my approach to this topic. Well, all that having been said, at about this point in this speech, which I give occasionally, there's people that want to disagree with me about the spring compression issue, and they want to share their anecdotes about the guns they've seen loaded and the magazines they've seen loaded and what did or didn't happen to them. And, you know, different people have different experiences, so they have different opinions. But there was one guy in particular that wanted to tell me that, that you can leave a magazine loaded forever and it won't incur any damage. And he was adamant that spring compression damage is a myth. And he knew this to be the case because he's left his Glock magazines loaded for six years. Okay, well, two things. One, that's a Glock magazine. If there were ever a magazine that I would bet could be loaded for 25 or 30 years and not sustain damage, it would be a Glock magazine. And two, Six years? Well, I guess what is or isn't a long time is open to a little bit of interpretation. Let me see if I can explain where six years falls in my perception of what is a long time. This wallet is my daily carry wallet. It's the wallet I carry every day. My mother gave me that wallet for my 17th birthday. So let's see, if it were new when I got it, I was 17, that would make it today 20 years old. This shooting jacket I have, you know, if you've seen any of my presentations, you know I have several of them, but the one I'm wearing today is over 40 years old. Let me show you one other thing. Six years, I can tell you in all honesty and sincerity, I have eaten Pop-Tarts that were over six years old. Obviously, people's perceptions of what is or isn't a long time can vary quite a bit. Oh, by the way, men, what you think is a long time and what your girlfriend thinks is a long time are two very different things. Keep that in mind. But in talking about firearms, and specifically our topic question today, can a firearm or a magazine incur damage due to having its spring fully compressed for a long time? What I'd tell you is, depending on the firearm, and depending on the magazine, and depending on what you mean when you say a long time, in my experience, 
absolutely yes, sometimes damage does occur. That having been said, if you're still watching this and listening to me, thank you for your patience. And thanks for watching the spring compression video.